Greetings, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. Today it is time to give you my May stats wrap up and I had actually a pretty good reading month in May. Read quite a lot of books, finished quite a lot of things that had been ongoing for a while and gave quite a few things five stars as well which was nice. Without further ado let's just start talking about the books. I read a total of 17 books in May. That was from, I'm not going to be able to give you a specific number of authors here, I read three books from one author and then I also read three books that were collections of works from multiple authors so it's a lot of authors. <laughs> I mean they kind of cancel each other out a little bit. The longest book that I read was That Hideous Strength by C.S. Lewis which the ebook edition that I ended up getting. I was reading this as part of the Space Trilogy read-along organised by Victoria from a musical bookworm and I was borrowing my dad's paperback copy because my paperback copy was in storage only it turned out my dad's copy was an abridged version and everyone else was reading the full text so I wanted to try and read that so I ended up getting an ebook edition of the full text so that I could read the full version and the particular edition that I got was listed on iBooks which is where I got it from as having 629 pages. Now when I actually got the font to a size that I was happy reading it kind of shifted it a bit but that was the listed number of pages so that's what we're going for. The shortest book that I read was called Liturgy and Spiritual Formation by Carolyn Headley. This was one I had to read for an essay. It was more of a pamphlet really. It had 28 pages. The total number of pages of the books I finished in May was, oh it's a neat number, it was 5,252 so 5252 so that's pretty cool and that gave me an average book length of 309 pages which is fairly average really. For me, four of the books I read were over 500 pages but less than a thousand pages so I earned two pounds for those. The rest were all under 500 pages so I earned one pound each for those which meant I earned a total of 21 pounds in May which is pretty good and most of the time that would be a really great result. However, <laughs> you may remember if you watch these videos regularly you'll know that I've been working at a deficit for a little while and it hasn't gotten any better particularly from that. If I'd managed to not buy any books in May then I probably would have been alright but I did buy books. I mentioned that I had a couple of pre-orders. I had two pre-orders arrive and I wanted to keep them for various reasons so I'm just going to go into those. So I got Illusionary by Zoraida Cordova. This is the second book in the Hollow Crown series. We read the first book in Sendry last year for Bay Sirens and I really loved it. I really wanted to support the author. I have a hardback edition of Incendiary so I kind of wanted to get a matching copy of Illusionary and I'm also really keen to hear how this story goes on. We're going to be buddy reading this in Space Sirens so I really wanted to get that. I had had it pre-ordered on Amazon, I've now actually cancelled all my Amazon pre-orders because the other book I got they were telling me it was a really long time it was before it's going to be delivered so I've now moved all my pre-orders either to Hive or to Blackwells who are both much more ethical tax paying companies <laughs> and so I think I got this one from Hive in the end but this cost me £11.96 which was actually cheaper than it was going to cost me on Amazon as well so I saved a little bit of money that way. The other pre-order I had arrive was the Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan Hay and I wanted to keep hold of this pre-order A because I signed up to her pre-order campaign which I meant I got little pre-order incentives of these little character cards and a cute little postcard with a message from her. I would have felt bad if I'd cancelled it. She also made a donation to an ocean conservation charity for all the pre-orders so because I'd taken part in that pre-order campaign it would have been wrong to then cancel the pre-order. Secondly she had a lot of issues with the American publisher of her first book and one of the ways she was asking readers to show their support was to pre-order this book. I've heard great things about her as an author so I'm really excited to read this. I want to try and get to it in June to justify having bought it but whether I would get there or not I'm not sure so I think I ended up getting this one from Blackwells yes I did because I've got a Blackwells bookmark in there <laughs> this cost me 11 99 which again I think was cheaper than it was on Amazon so even if I just stuck to those two I would have been roughly at the same point that I was at the end of April which wouldn't have been too bad but I mean I blame the fact that I had my vaccine in May and in a moment of 
low willpower having just had my vaccine. I went with my housemate to get vaccinated and then we went out for lunch afterwards and then she persuaded me, nay forced me, to go into charity shops and I said to her in the morning, whatever happens don't let me buy books in the charity shops and then she failed to be my conscience. She did kind of challenge me <laughs> to be fair, she was like are you sure? <laughs> you did say and I said I know but I bought them anyway. So I bought two books in a charity shop. I got My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyin Kan Braithwaite. Sorry if I said that wrong. Which I've heard so many good things about this book. It's been mentioned on Strong Sense of Place podcast, which is my favourite bookish podcast. I've heard a lot of good things and so I really have wanted to read this for a while. I'm excited to have a copy because I had been planning to get it as an ebook from the library and to be fair I probably should have done that. But never mind. I also got The Amber Shadows by Lucy Ribchester so this is historical fiction set at Bletchley Park which is something I'm fascinated by. I read another book by Lucy Ribchester which I think was called The Hourglass Factory. I read that a couple of years ago and really really loved it so when I saw another book by her I wanted to give it a try and both of these were £1.49. I mean bargains really. <laughs> what are you gonna do? So I was very naughty. I was very very naughty in May. I shouldn't have bought any books because I didn't have any money in my budget and yet I still managed to buy four books. So even with my earnings of £21 I'm now on minus £19.28 in my book budget. If I managed to read the same amount of books in June as I did in May and managed to not buy any books in June then maybe at the end of June I will be back in the black. Who knows whether that will happen. While I'm on books that I have acquired in the month of May. As I'm not really filming hauls at the moment I just wanted to mention two others that have arrived. The first one I was sent through Love Book Tours because I'm taking part in a blog tour for this book which is A Deadly Coincidence by Keith Finney. They had sent an ebook copy as well so I wasn't expecting to get a hard copy so I was very excited that this had arrived. The publisher of this is Loom Books and I'm taking part in the blog tour which is the first week of July and so I'm going to be reading this soon so that I can get that review done in time. So that was very exciting. I love getting free books. The other one, my lovely friend Justine from I Should Read That ended up with two copies of this book and she asked on our group chat if anyone wanted it and I was like yes please because I've heard so many good things about this book. So this is Sister Song by Lucy Holland. I don't really know much of what it's about. I think it's kind of historical fantasy so it's set in like an ancient British society and there's magic and things and I'm assuming it's about sisters. Oh it's got a signed book plate in it as well, I didn't even know that. So thank you so much to Justine for sending me this, I'm really looking forward to reading it soon. That was all the books I'd acquired. While I'm on that, I think I forgot to update on this stat last month, but in April my TBR, the total number of my TBR stayed the same, it was at 608, which is okay. It has crept up slightly in May because of acquiring more books to add to my TBR than what I read from my TBR. So although I read quite a lot of books, the majority of them were actually library books. So that has crept up to 611. Now I'm, I am not planning, well there's maybe one book that I might get at the end of June if I've managed to get the budget a bit more under control. That number's gonna, hopefully gonna be going down this month and not up any higher. We will see. Yeah, because I have still got quite a lot of library books and quite a lot of review books to get through. Anywho, the book that was published first of all the books I read was Life Together by Dietrich Bonhoeffer, which was published in 1939. That was one that I was kind of reading for uni, kind of. And then I read one, two, three books that were published in 2021. I gave two books three stars, 10 books four stars, and five books five stars. The book that took me the longest to read was Feminist Trauma Theology which took me 118 days so that was one I was reading for uni. I used it for a couple of essays and a couple of the other chapters are related to the research that I'm going to be doing starting in the autumn so that was really useful. So yeah that took me 118 days and then two books I finished on the same day I started them were Liturgy and Spiritual Formation because it was so short and Paddington at Large by Michael Bond. So that gave me an average reading length of 21 days which is pretty good. I've got a couple of books that have been on my currently reading shelf for a while that I'm hoping to finish maybe in June maybe in July so that number may, may go up again but I need I am working on like getting through books quicker and not having them hang around on that currently reading shelf for such a long time. The book that had been on my TBR for the longest time was again Paddington at Large by Michael Bond which had been on there for 1383 days which is not too bad. 
it's okay. I actually read quite a few books that had been added to my TBR around the same time, so that was when I moved into my previous place I was living in 2017 and unpacked a lot of books that had been in storage when I started using Goodreads. So four of the books came out of those boxes I added onto the TBR at that time. And then I had quite a few books that were either ebooks I borrowed from the library or ones I borrowed from the uni library that I started reading straight away when I got them. So that gave me an average length of time on my TBR of 355 days, which is great because it's less than a year, so it's good to keep that average about that place. Again, I've got quite a few things that have been on my TBR, the longest on that list. I want to try and get to a couple of them in the summer and so that might affect how big that number goes, but I've got a fairly good balance of reading books from my own TBR and reading new or borrowing books as well. I think that's a pretty good balance. So on that note, five of the books I read were from my own TBR. One was a new book this year. Eight books were library books, either from the public library or from the college library. One book I borrowed from a friend and two books were review books. So in terms of the format of the book, 10 books were paperbacks, one book was a hardback and a six books were ebooks. For genres I read seven Christian non-fiction. They were mainly ones that I was reading for uni, although I've got into quite a good routine in the mornings now and I tend to read a couple of chapters of a Christian non-fiction book like as part of my morning routine before going into doing my other studying or work, which is good because I would say probably at least a quarter of my own TBR are Christian non-fiction that I've collected over the years, so it's good to be working through some of those. I read one classic, two contemporaries, three fantasies, one non-fiction, two science fiction and one science fantasy. In terms of the ages the books were aimed at, one was for a children's audience, four were young adult and twelve were adult. Read a really good range of publishers this month and I'm really happy with this actually. But again this comes from reading a lot of Christian non-fiction because a lot of them are published by independent publishers. So seven of the books I read were from big five publishers and then ten were from independent publishers which I'm really happy about that. So I always like to promote independent publishers if I can. For author nationalities six were American, five were British, one was British Caribbean, one was Dutch, one was German, and three of the books had multiple authors of different nationalities. For author ethnicities, three of the books were from black Americans, one was a black British Caribbean person, three of the books had multiple authors of different ethnicities, one book was by a South Asian American, two books were by white American, five books were by white British people and two books were by white West Europeans. So that gave me a breakdown of five books being from individual authors of colour, nine books being from individual white authors and three of the books had multiple authors of different ethnicities. For author genders, this is rare, I read eight books by cisgendered men and only seven by cisgendered women and that's I think the first time in a very long time that I've read more books by male authors and by female authors and then of the three essay collection books that I read, two of them were from multiple authors of different genders but I think they were all still cisgendered people and then one of the book was entirely by cisgendered women so that's included in the cis women stat. For my challenges I think I did pretty well. I read one book that was translated from German. Two books were review books and I completed three series which I'm really pleased with. That was a really good achievement and two of those series were from my series I need to finish list as well which is even better. So making some inroads into that list because that was a really ambitious list. To be fair, they were series that I didn't have that many books to go on and some of the other series on that list I've got more to go for. We'll have to see how I got on with that. I'm not entirely sure it's still achievable to actually complete all of the series on that list, but we will see. And then for author diversity, again, I think I've done pretty well this month. Eight books were by authors from marginalised ethnicities or included authors from marginalised ethnicities. Two books were from authors in the LGBTQIA plus community. Two books featured authors with a disability. Six books featured authors who have spoken about their experience of mental illness. One book was from a neurodiverse author. And then for character diversity, again, I hit all of those markers, most of them multiple times within the books that I read. I think all in all that was pretty good as far as my stats were concerned. Um, I now have to pick favourite and least favourite books. So of the two books that I gave three stars, one was Liturgy and Spiritual Formation, which was not enough of a book really to comment on it. So I think by default my least favourite book of the month was probably Voyage to Venus, 
also known as Perilandra by C.S. Lewis, which I gave three stars. I think my main criticism of this book, I enjoyed it mostly, but towards the end, the story got a little bit lost in the theology. If you're familiar with C.S. Lewis, as well as writing fiction, he wrote a lot of non-fiction, he wrote a lot of theology books, and he used his fiction often as a vehicle for communicating his ideas about theology and mythology and that sort of thing. And I just felt that towards the end of Voyage to Venus, the story got a little bit lost amongst the theology and it was quite heavy, quite intense stuff and I was speed reading this to try and finish it in time to watch the live show for the Space Trilogy read-along that Victoria was hosting from a musical bookworm. I really enjoyed that book but it was my least favourite of the series and I think was probably of the other books because I had a really strong reading month so that just was slightly weaker than some of the other things that I read. In terms of what my favourite book was, that's a more difficult decision. Of the ones I gave five stars, the one that I enjoyed the most, that kind of has stayed with me the most because I finished it quite near the start of the month is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. This is a young adult novel inspired by Arthurian legend but set in America and the protagonist Brie is dealing with sudden loss of her mother and so she's got quite a complex grief reaction and then she finds herself caught up with a secret society. She discovers she has some form of magical power but she doesn't really understand it and so she's trying to uncover the truth about what happened to her mother, what her magic is and what it means, how she fits in with this secret society and kind of dealing with like the legacy of slavery in her town. So there was a lot of complex stuff going on and I thought it was handled really well and I really, really enjoyed that book. I'm definitely looking forward to carrying on that. So I think that is gonna be my favorite book of the month. So I think that's all I wanted to talk about today. Let me know if you've read any of these books that I've mentioned today and what you thought of them. Let me know some of the things you've been reading recently. What was your favourite thing you read in May? Have you had any pre-orders come? Let me know what they are. Do you also have issues with controlling your book buying habits? To be fair, I am going to say this. My spending on books has got a lot better since I introduced the budget. I know that I'm still spending more than I say I'm going to, but compared with how many books I was buying this time last year, I mean, comparatively, we were in a lockdown then, we're in a lockdown now, and I buy books when I'm stressed. So the fact that I've managed to resist buying books because of the awareness of the budget, I know I haven't completely stopped buying books and I know that I am over budget, but I am buying less books than I would be if the budget wasn't there and so I think that's the important thing. Anywho, what was I saying? Yeah, so comment down below if you wanna have a chat to me about any of the stuff I've talked about today or if you just wanna let me know that you've been here. Let's go with some kind of money emoji because my book budget is forever on my mind. <laughs> you can also like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and also follow me on my social media. All that information is listed for you in the description box below. But that's it for today, so thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.